Welcome to get to know the speakers of digital confacts. Today we have with us Ricardo Faria, who is senior service and UX designer, KPI expert from Cognizant. He will be speaking on the topic how to measure design impact with KPIs during the gaming and animation conference happening at Park Plaza Amsterdam Airport in Amsterdam on 29th May 2024. Hi Ricardo, welcome to the chat show. Hi. Good, good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Nice to be here, speak with you, and uh, more than happy to put to to be a speaker in the in the so in nice event in these digital conflicts. So yeah, hi everyone. So Ricardo, please give us a brief introduction of yourself and your field of expertise for our audience. Absolutely. Um, so I'm a senior uh, service UX designer um, and the uh, KPI rocks experts rocks and for uh, result-oriented KPI system. Um, I've been um, leading different teams in different areas or different industries, um, working with different clients, um, like Apple, um, Goldman Sachs, Shell currently, um, Google, so different clients. I've been working uh, as a consultant, um, I did uh, a lot of uh, UI, UX, uh, but some part of my journey, I started to move more for business. Um, I started to connect more in my design process and UX process, the measurement, expect the strategy. Um, and this is why um, now, um, currently, I'm working Cognizant and I'm working with, with Shell, my current client. And um, my role is... Um, design processes, set up strategy, understand what the business needs and connect what the user actually needs. So this is a one of the key uh, bridges of factors that we will speak in uh, our events is to help designers to make sense of the work they do. And this means in animation, this means in, in any industry. If we don't uh, align the, the, the expectations and needs before, the work you do will be impactful, but you can't measure it. You can't show how important your work is. And this is what probably one of the gap in the industry, because as a designers or animators, we do an amazing job, but we are not recognized. So I think it's a little bit, a little spicy here for everyone is watching this call, what I will speak in the event. Yeah. Uh, it's great knowing about you. So how excited are you for our event? Super excited. Um, I love to be in the community and uh, and uh, share my knowledge and uh, listen to interesting questions. So super, super happy to, to, be, to be in the, in the events. So moving forward, I have a few questions for you today. My first question is, in the realm of design, many outcomes can seem subjective. How do you identify the right key performance indicators or KPIs to quantify design impact effectively? That's an excellent question. Um, can give an example in a, in 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 a client I have. Uh, we started uh, we started the, the 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 quantification of design initially uh, with with just some reports from uh, Google Analytics. Um, I did work in a lot of the the strategy field uh, to understand. Uh, so first of all, why the reports are there what the reports take, what type of research you did in, in previously. Uh, I understand the gap was there. Was the, the was not an was not an alignment between what what the design uh, needs is needed and what the goal of the company or, or the, the business is. So I made that connection. I I I have some workshops with uh, with my clients. I I align the expectations. I understand exactly what they wanted, and I understand finally what that what is the scope, what was the strategy, uh, where they want to move forward, and then I I quantify the design, in the sense of my work was already scoping the way, what I will deliver to them will fit their needs and their motivations of the company, and on the same time. With the research we did and uh, we had before and the research we did strategically also meets the user needs. So in the end, I could quantify my design with some key metrics or key, uh, KPIs, key performance indicators. And I also did some UKS, some objective key results along the time. So the work I did 
was, okay, I know the strategy now, let's make my quarter the objectives. Let's have a high level, long-term strategy uh, or KPI to measure. And uh, let's understand what is your lean indicator, right? And uh, let's keep it in the dashboard to measure. And most important of it, let's also have a type of a cycle in the end. How can you maintain? And then for mention with that is create a plan. How can, who is really responsible to analyze the data? We will be the responsible to give that solutions and the design team needs to be involved on it. And that is where I put the design a little bit in an important role. And I quantify my design in the end with some key key numbers. Because again, if you set up that key metrics, you can make calculations and you can tell the impact of this specific delivery was this impact. And this is an example I, I like always to give is before you jump into your design speaking, uh, design tasks, go some steps back. It's important. Don't lose it. Yep. I think you explained it very well. So my next question is, can you share some example of how a change in design led to miserable improvement in business or user engagement metrics? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> one project I work was a consultancy company. They wanted to improve the their portal for employees. Uh, the problem there was, was a gap. Was a gap because the employees, they work for... Uh, as consultants for the companies and uh, the, the engagement rate was really low. They never, they never used that portal. They always use the portal, the clients they work. So we needed to do some work there to increase that uh, engagement rate. Uh, so we went again to the data we had. Again, it's probably one thing people, designers need to live with. You never have the data you want. Some Most of the business, they are not mature on the data. So you need to find the data for yourself means you need to dig in. You need to speak with different people in organizations, try to collect your data. You will find it. So we did that work. We try, we speak with different key roles in the company, customer, customer service from the company. We collected and then we did um, basically some pre pre uh, interviews to understand okay what uh, what is the what can we change here what is your main pain points what is your main uh what is the patterns uh, where we can start to move our pieces forward to improve and then i did an exercise which is quite interesting with the business was explain your business in simple words and tell me what you want to achieve and it was a simple exercise simple, super simple workshop but that unblocked that's that the issue I, I spotted there. And I created a specific and more personalized objectives and KPIs. And that helps me to make some prototypes and test them based on what I learned before. So my, in, my um, engagement rates increase after I finish my project and then deliver. Uh, I notice in next three months, that we increase the, the engagement, engagement rates from fifteen uh, percent, uh, which is really bad, to uh, to sixty percent, because people are start to be more aware of what exists. We we improve that interaction uh, in that platform. We uh, we spotted uh, the needs of the user when they were open actually in my portal. What they don't need to listen to them, and we start slowly moving what they did as a task right in that client to go more to community centric to understand, okay, we work for this company. We also have interesting people here we can speak with and learn. And also I can spend much more time in an effective way to use this portal. So obviously I would say the engagement rate went up uh, because there was a lot of work behind. Because we need to learn, we need to improve, we need to test, we need to do some some extra work. But nothing happened if we don't start from, from scratch. And that is probably the main message here. Doesn't matter if his engagement rate, if he's any rate, is any, you need to focus in what again, what is the problem? Focus on the on, on the problem first. Go to the problem space, understand the understand different ways. Uh, the, the, go until 
don't stop until you have a clear answer and, uh, and until you understand exactly the problem. When you have that, you are 50% of the problem fixed, even the study even fix the problem because now you know exactly the way you need to go. And that is what I recommend people to do. I think you shared nice example and also related to yourself. So my final question for today will be, please tell us about your hobbies or what you like to do in your past time. I love to travel. <laughs> um, probably because I'm an expat, I live in Amsterdam, uh, in Netherlands, uh, it's a lovely country to live with. Um, I live in London before, uh, quite travel quite a lot. Um, I love to make exercise. I love to do to do some marathons. I love to do CrossFit. Um, I love to, I love to read interesting uh, books. Um, um, and also um, I like I, I'm a, I'm a movie person. <laughs> I like to to have interesting movies, uh, for different topics, and and spend time with my family, um, as much as I can spend with time with my son. Yeah, and learn. I'm a learner, natural learner. I always learn to learn something new. Now I start my. Uh, um python tree learning code i'm i'm, I'm doing a artificial intelligence training to design products and services i'm um, i like to be proactive because our industry goes fast if you stop and you think what you learn is enough is not so i'm uh, going through the wave and learn artificial intelligence tomorrow probably is going to be uh, artificial reality or mixed reality but yeah we need to be ready for it yeah so any recent movie you have watched I love obviously the Steve Jobs because I love the I love the I love the guy uh, for all the reasons. I took a storytelling training and I noticed I noticed I know the guy's amazing communication skills and uh, the way he shows his thoughts, his ideas, is he, amazing. Uh, as a, his biography, uh, yeah, I think we should have more than more Steve Jobs, but I think the, they, they come once a time. <laughs> yeah, uh, I love to see from him, yeah. It was yeah. Name. It was Interesting, amazing. yeah. So thanks, Ricardo. It was great connecting with you. And I am thrilled with your excitement to join our conference. Any words for our participants who will be joining the conference? Absolutely. Make my life difficult. Ask me difficult, difficult questions. I'm not promised I will answer all of them with most experts because I'm, again... I know what I know, but I'm always learning. Uh, again, this is also for you guys. Don't feel, don't feel you don't know anything. Uh, take your curiosity out. Ask me questions, and I, and I, even in the end, when I finish my presentation, I'm always open here to answer questions and to have a, a quick chat and share uh, knowledge with all of you. So super happy to to participate and uh, looking forward. To, yeah, yeah. Thanks for your time today, Ricardo, and to all the participants. Yeah. Don't miss his keynote session happening on Gaming and Animation Confex on 29th May 2024, presented by Digital Confex. Get a great chance to connect with him in person. See you soon, Ricardo. See you soon. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Thank you.